Welcome back to Paul's Tech News. It has been yet another tumultuous week in the world of technology, with perhaps the biggest news dropping early Thursday morning when the Linus Tech Tips YouTube channel was hacked. And while that situation has been rectified, it's a chilling reminder to the rest of us that we too might find ourselves rushing to our workstations in the dead of night, buck naked, without taking even a moment to slip into a lacy negligee or some booty shorts so that we may frantically attempt to salvage our life's work from being permanently deleted by hackers. But don't let the mental image of Linus moment of shame and ignominy overshadow the rest of the goings on this week. There was also a shakeup on the Intel graphics team, a fleeting rumor that AMD 2 is designing hybrid CPUs, and Nvidia's Jensen Huang just flat out told us all that his end game goal is to seek cybernetic immortality so that he may continue to run his company as a robot hopefully with cool lasers that lay waste to his enemies when he says RTX on. All that and more in this week's Tech News. Excellent. Today's video is brought to you by Micro Center. This is one of my favorite places to buy PC parts. So if you're building or upgrading your PC, I highly recommend making your way down to one of their 25 retail stores in the US. They have consistently competitive prices and an excellent selection of PC hardware and other tech goodies. And they have a custom PC builder on the Micro Center website. Use it to spec out your rig and it will show you parts in store at your nearest location while ensuring compatibility. Then you can pick up in store or have their pros assemble it for you. So click the sponsor link in the description to find a Micro Center near you. Was Linus really naked? That's the real question that lingers after Thursday's early morning debacle, which saw the primary Linus Tech Tips YouTube channel with 15 million subscribers, as well as secondary channels TechLinked and TechQuickie with 1.8 million and 4.2 million subscribers respectively, hijacked and repurposed to live stream crypto scam videos starring Elon Musk. The channels were renamed Tesla and used to trick hapless viewers with more crypto in their wallets than cents in their brains to send Bitcoin to the scammers in in order to receive twice as much Bitcoin in return, which surprisingly did not happen because as mentioned, this was just a big old scam. Now personally, I'd like to think that there are not enough rubes in the world who sit on that Venn diagram crossover point between smart enough to figure out how to use cryptocurrency and dumb enough to believe this scam was real to send anything of value via those scam links. But the fact is these channel hijackings are not new and are indeed ongoing. So those responsible must be making enough money to make it worth their while, economically speaking. The LMG channels that were eventually banned by YouTube on Thursday were all restored by Friday morning, thankfully, so it does help to be one of the top tech channels on the platform in this circumstance. As Linus mentions in his video that went up Friday explaining what happened, the one that supposedly shows him in his birthday suit, many smaller channels who have gone through this had to wait much longer for their channels to be restored, and some were never fully recovered. The hackers gained control of the LMG channels via spear phishing, targeting an LMG employee with a fake email pretending to be a sponsor, which included a malware-laden attachment that was actually an executable file posing as a PDF. Clicking that file allowed the malware to hijack Chrome and Edge browser sessions, bypassing two-factor authentication and the need to know the account passwords. The employee responsible was Colton, who Linus has now had drawn and quartered. I'm just kidding, the employee was not disclosed and they will not be reprimanded either. Linus did a good job accepting responsibility and promising to use this incident to improve their internal security procedures and training. But just for the record, I will never promote cryptocurrency here on my channel or run a crypto giveaway, so even if you see Elon Musk on a Paul's Hardware live stream, you should not try to send me any Bitcoin. Maybe just buy some merch on paulshardware.net instead. NVIDIA held GTC 2023 this week, the GPU technology conference, but it didn't make as big of a splash as usual since there were no major consumer PC hardware announcements. Now it's not that advances in EUV lithography or NVIDIA's ARM-based Grace Superchip aren't exciting, they're just a bit over the head of most home PC builders. AI has been a hot topic in 2023 though, and NVIDIA is leaning heavily into continued development of hardware solutions to accelerate AI inferencing tasks such as the new L4 and H100 GPUs that were announced. They're very much encouraged by the explosion of interest in AI, since tools such as ChatGPT have allowed access to AI inference models by anyone with an internet connection. So it's no surprise that CEO Jensen Huang was proudly touting NVIDIA's pioneering AI efforts in an interview with CNBC one week ago, although he may have tipped his hand just a bit too far when he was asked about his future as CEO of the company. I don't know exactly for how long that's gonna be, but three to four decades, I'd say. 
Another four decades, I'd be robotic, and then maybe another three to four decades after that. Jensen, just FYI, is 60 years old in 2023, so he's talking about continuing his tenure until he's 90 or 100. But just as I predicted, he already has machinations on making himself more mechanical, starting with that cute little Jensen AI avatar, presumably, and then working his way up to robot status with cybernetic enhancements until he is more machine than man. I'm only left wondering if his flesh melting lasers will be mounted to his shoulders, predator style, or his forearms so he can more casually lay waste to enemies with a simple gesture. Or maybe it will be a more powerful death ray embedded in his chest like Iron Man style. We can only wonder. But that's all I have for GTC coverage today. Intel was subjected to much skepticism when they revealed a hybrid CPU core model with their Alder Lake CPUs back when 12th generation launched, but they've been largely vindicated as the P-Core and E-Core combo has proven to be quite capable in keeping up with, and oftentimes surpassing, AMD's competing Zen 4-based solutions. And perhaps AMD has taken note if this rumor is true. An unnamed AMD processor recently showed up in the Milky Way at Home database, which features a combination of two high-performance Zen 4 cores and four energy-efficient Zen 4C cores. And Twitter chip expert Instlat x 64 believes it is a CPU and development codenamed Phoenix 2. Hybrid chips are often described using the big little nomenclature coined by ARM, and in this case the Phoenix 2 features two big Zen 4 cores as well as four small Zen 4C cores, as well as an RDNA 3-based integrated GPU with 512 stream processors and a DDR5 memory controller. While it's too early to make performance predictions, I could see a competitively priced CPU with this configuration providing entry-level gamers with a great option for budget builds, especially if the iGPU is up to snuff. While this is still very much a rumor, Tom's Hardware expects these Phoenix 2 APUs to launch in the second half of 2023. But now it's time for me to launch into Tech Briefs, the part of the show that just rockets by like some kind of Rocket, I suppose. Intel's graphics team has now successfully launched their Arc GPUs, which, while not perfect, have making inroads into the discrete GPU market, bolstered by continued driver updates that have improved performance across a range of titles. So what is Intel EVP and Chief GPU Architect Raja Kaduri doing to celebrate? He's quitting which is okay, he's been at Intel for five years now. He worked for both AMD's Radeon team and Apple prior to that. So leaving for a role at a generative AI startup isn't a huge leap and we wish Raja well in his continued endeavors, especially if he can use his AI company to design himself a cyborg robot suit so he can have at least one epic battle with Jensen in the tech wars to come. Before the world is laid to waste in those future conflicts, however, regular folks are still considering an upgrade to their gaming PC. And hot on the heels of ASRock's AM5 motherboard that actually costs $125, as AMD promised last year, which launched two weeks ago, that was a confusing sentence, but Gigabyte now has a budget AM5 motherboard too. Also $125, the B650 MK. This is the B650 MK. MK. I can't even do that well. It's the B650, okay? And it launches March 31st, but is up for pre-order right now. This forces budget builders to make some tough choices though. While both boards feature an AM5 socket, 2.5 gigabit LAN, a Type-C front panel header, and two M.2 slots, including one with a heatsink, the Gigabyte board has four memory slots instead of two, while the ASRock board features better PCIe slot connectivity as well as a Gen 5 M.2 slot. So the choice is yours. If bigger is better, then check out this picture that's supposed to be an upcoming Intel server CPU socket, LGA 7529. That's 7,529 pins partially situated beneath an Intel LGA 4677 CPU in this photo shared by Spray on Copper on Twitter. LGA 4677 being the current socket for Xeon scalable Sapphire Rapids and Emerald Rapids CPUs. The code name for these LGA 7529 CPUs is C Sierra Forest, and they'll likely support 12-channel DDR5 memory while potentially running with a 500-watt TDP and 1,000-watt peak power draw. Large CPUs are regaining popularity now that multi-chip designs have become more viable, but even at an estimated size of 66 by 92.5 millimeters, Intel's newest socket is still smaller than the 93 by 120 millimeter LGA 6096 SP5 socket used by AMD's Epic, Genoa, and Bergamo processors. Now we all know that you shouldn't plug in a random USB device that you find on the street, right? 
Well, well, if you didn't know, here's another reminder that found USB drives are a common means of deploying viruses or malware onto a PC, and they can even just destroy your hardware by means of a surprise electrical surge. But on Tuesday, another USB-based threat appeared. They might just explode. As told by Ars Technica, five Ecuadorian journalists received USB drives in the mail, and when one of them foolishly plugged it into their PC, it exploded, causing mild hand and face injuries. Only half of the intended charge went off, which was made of the explosive compound called RDX, so things could have been a bit worse. But a closing reminder to stay safe yourself as you navigate the world of technology. And whether it's a random USB stick or a vaguely suspicious PDF in an email attachment, stay frosty and trust no one, except perhaps me. Have I told you about the two-for-one crypto exchange deal that I'm kicking off? I'm just kidding, of course, crypto sucks. But there you have it, guys, tech news for the week. And if you liked it, click that like button or leave me a comment down below. While you're down there, all the articles I talked about today are linked in the video's description if you're interested. And you can also check out my store at paulshardware.net for high quality merchandise, t-shirts, hoodies, beer sets, and more. Subscribing to my channel is always a good call too. Thanks again, everyone, and we'll see you next week.